Content or by everything that tried to cause World War Three by shooting down a Russian jet. They should be expelled from NATO and left to fend for themselves. Christians should campaign and draw other people into the cause of boycotting Turkey. There should be protests outside of every embassy of the Turkish state across every Christian country and across every Western country in the world. Christians, you have to stand up to this kind of Islamist ideology. Turkey, and you must do so because the Bible commands and it instructs and it demonstrates that Christians should stand in solidarity with other Christians. The Bible says that the church is one body, not several bodies, not 60 bodies, not 360 bodies. Christians, Christians must stand with, must stand with our brothers and sisters in Turkey in solidarity because the Bible says that when one part of the body suffers, all of the body suffers. So when Christians are persecuted in Turkey, every Christian everywhere in the world suffers the insult, suffers the slap in the face. The Bible says, do good to all men, but especially those in the house of faith, which means that our solidarity must first and foremost be for our brothers and sisters. Hagia Sophia was a church for 900 years. It is called the wisdom of God. Hagia Sophia, the divine wisdom, the holy wisdom. It is a wisdom, it is a church dedicated to God. It was forcibly converted by Muslim Ottomans after they invaded Christian land and butchered and enslaved the Christian inhabitants of Constantinople. The Turkish state carried out the Armenian genocide that murdered over a million Armenian Christians. It has never apologized for this genocide. The Turkish state has never apologized for the Assyrian genocide. 900,000 Assyrian Christians were butchered by the Ottoman Turkish state and it has never apologized. The Turkish state has never apologized for the mass murder of the Greek Christians that inhabited the Turkish Peninsula in 1914, 15 and 16. It has never apologized for these murders where 250,000 Greek Christians were butchered by the Turkish state. It has never paid reparations for these mass murders. Turkey still occupies northern Cyprus, having ethnically and religiously cleansed northern Cyprus of its Greek Cypriot inhabitants. Turkey is responsible for ethnic and religious cleansing on a grand scale. When you go to holiday with Turkey, you are essentially going on holiday to the Third Reich. It is like going on holiday to Nazi Germany. If Nazi Germany had survived having killed six million Jews and you went on holiday there, you are essentially doing that every time you go to Turkey. Boycott Turkey until Erdogan and the Islamist state falls and he pays reparations 
for its murder of Christians. Turkey imposes heterodox laws upon the Patriarch of Constantinople. It is a law in Turkey that the Patriarch of Constantinople must be a Turkish citizen. This is a heterodox law. It contradicts the canons of the church. The Patriarch of Constantinople can be elected from any orthodox believer, from any ethnicity, because the Orthodox Church is not an ethno-nationalist organization. It believes in the unity and the confederacy of Orthodox Christians from multiple ethnicities. The law restricting the Patriarch only to a Turkish citizen is a heterodox law and an example of the persecutions imposed upon Orthodox Christians in Turkey. There are other laws discriminating against and persecuting Turkish Christians in Turkey. Many Turkish Christians have to flee for their lives when they become Christians. And where are the virtue signalling hypocrites of the left? Where are the liberal progressives? Where are the voices of tolerance? Where are the celebrities calling out the Turkish state for its apartheid systems as they did against South Africa and the apartheid there? Chris Turkey is also oppressing Kurdish minorities. These are the Muslims who are being persecuted by the Turkish state because they are not Turkish, because the modern Turkish state is an ethno state that has no tolerance for those who are not Turks. Turkey is using the refugee crisis to extort money from the European Union. And the weak European Union is allowing them to do it because it follows a weak liberal progressive ideology rather than a muscular Christian faith. Amen. Turkey allied, Turkey allied itself to ISIS and other Islamist organizations in the Syrian civil war. And Afghan Mo, Afghan Mo, that Muslim right there, brother, stand back. Afghan Mo, that Muslim right there. When I said that Turkey allied itself to ISIS, his reply was, so what? That's so it, that's what? It, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it so that's what, it, guy, he says. I'll tell you so what. Oh, ISIS kidnapped Christian children. He says so what. Ooh. ISIS raped Christian women. Yeah. He said so what. Ooh. ISIS kidnapped Yazidi women and raped them. He say? said so what. <laughs> ISIS. <laughs> try to religiously cleanse the Yazidis from Syria and Iraq. Okay. They tried mass murder yeah. against men, yeah. women and children. Okay. And, and this said, man, yeah, yeah. this man <laughs> said, <laughs> so what? Uh, that one, they, they, that they, one he they, said, they, so they, what? Wow. ISIS wow. tried to oppress Christians under a system of dimitu yeah. and this muslim <laughs> said so what wow. ladies and gentlemen <laughs> you have to stand up against his kind of islam <laughs> thug islam <laughs> salafist islam yeah. if you don't stand up to these punks <laughs> to their backward seventh century bullshit <laughs> They will oppress you, yeah. they will persecute you, they 
will make you into second class citizens. Find your balls and stand up to scum like him because he is no better than someone who supports ISIS. So what was his answer? Turkey, Turkey has invaded Syria. Turkey has invaded Iraq. Turkey has interfered in Libyan politics. Turkey has invaded, interfered in Moroccan politics. Moroccan politics. And why? Because Erdogan wants to establish again some kind of Ottoman caliphate Good on him. in the Mediterranean. Good on him, he says. You've got to stand up to punk Islam like his. Because the only thing, the only thing that makes punk Islam strong is your weakness, is your cowardice, is your inability to stand up for yourselves against trash like this. ISIS supporting filth like that. That's who you've got to stand up to. Find your balls, find your backbone. Stand up to trash like him, stand up to trash that support him, and stand up to Turkey, who has desecrated the Church of Hagia Sophia. There you go. He's happy. He's happy that a church is being desecrated. Wow. Look at, look at the That's what he's happy about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other cultures come That's here. what he's happy about. Look, look he's let's trying to call Turkey a hypocrite. A scumbag whose answer to the rape of women was so what? Wow. That's what he said. That's what he said. Okay, okay. okay. he is angry. He is angry so and chatting BS because. Aga Sophia, so Turkey's court has decided. He's a Muslim and he's putting his hand up. Oh, he's a Muslim. He's a Muslim. He's a Muslim. I apologise, bro. I apologise. So, so, Christians, if you do not find so, your balls, Turkey's court, you do not stand up Turkey court has allowed the go government of Turkey. To turn Aga Sophia from a museum to a mosque. That's why it's hurting him. A sovereign country as a Turkey, a sovereign nation, a sovereign nation decides to change a museum into a mosque. It hurts him. This is a man. This is a man. He went to the internet and found good deals on Turkey. He went to Turkey embassy. He didn't get the visa. Because he has contempt for Christians. This human trash, this piece of filth, who, by the way, once punched me in the face, but he punches like a girl. I talked right through it. This Islamist filth is someone who wants to see Christians made into dimmies. Don't you? Do you want Christians to be dimmies? You were brave a minute ago. Where's your bravery? Do you want him to be made a dimmy? Do you? You're a racist. You're a racist. Why are you a racist? Bro, leave it. Leave it. Ladies and gentlemen. No, 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 no. Bro. 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 Did I? Did I say anyone? Did I say anyone? Leave it. Leave it. I said this. Allah, brother, brother. Leave it. Brother, brother. Bro, leave him. He's a professional. He's a professional. Tell me, bro. 
Let me ask you a question. Don't gain. Let me ask you no. He's a professional. He's a professional. I don't like seeing that. He's going to call him out. What's this? This Muslim is going to call this Muslim out by answering one question. One question. You ready? One question. I used the example of ISIS raping women. He said, so what? No, I didn't. So what? I didn't. Listen, you buffoon. He said, he said, listen, listen. Listen, listen to the question. Yeah, what's the question? Right, listen. I use the example of ISIS raping women. He didn't. He said, he said, he's wrong. So what? He's lying. He's lying. Do you agree? He's lying. Do you agree with him? He's lying. Do you agree with him? I don't agree with raping anyone. It's So, is someone? Islam doesn't teach Is someone? Is someone? Is someone who says so what to women being raped trash? Are they trash? Are they trash? Yes, they are. 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 Yes, yes, there he goes. No, I say it. I say it. They are trash. I say it. This guy is human trash. Your intellect is very low, bro. Bro, well, what kind of argument is that? Did you not hear what he just said? You know what hey, raping anyone is obviously fucking wrong, bro. Well done. Hey, 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 hey. It's, it's a shame you're a prophet to a new Tell him off. Tell him off. Tell him off. No, but I say that. I say that. If somebody rape a woman, they are trash. Unless, I say it. Unless they're ISIS. But dude, that was not the question. Unless they're ISIS. Rewind the tapes. Rewind the tapes. What was the question? You do well with the yeah, yeah. I hope you get guided. I hope you do as well, bro. Your Christophobia doesn't help your cause. Exactly. We don't need Christophobia. We don't need Christophobia. We don't need Christophobia. The Islamists can keep it. Okay. Okay. So, next point. Next talk. Okay. Right. Bars closed. New topic. Okay. So new topic, guys. Unfortunately, when I have to shout over Islamist supporting scum, it sometimes ruins my throat. Yeah. Everybody knows who just come here. Yeah. The Holy Spirit. Yeah. Give the man some wine. Give me the. <laughs> Maybe on a different day when I've got a seat. Sit down and enjoy it. So I'm going to have to talk a bit quieter. If you want to hear me, you're going to have to listen carefully. They don't want to. Listen I want to bullshit. talk about. I want to talk about why the churches seem to be irrelevant today. Okay? Because it is a fact. Because the they found vast out the lie. The majority of English people do see the church as irrelevant. And I want to explain why I think that is the case. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give five theses as to why I think people see the church as irrelevant. And then I'm going to give five theses as I think what is the best way to deal with that problem. And after I've done all ten, I'm going to invite anyone who wants to argue or anyone who wants to ask a question to do so. So I'm asking you to be polite. I'm asking you to wait until I finish all five or ten and then bring your questions. You don't need to remember what I say. You just need to remember the number. Of the thesis. Of the thesis. Just remember the, the problem number. with Bob is and then when you remember that the number because then when you remember the, the government number. of Turkey Bob, when you has decided to, to turn Aga Sophia to a mosque because it used to be a church. Shut up! Don't worry, and don't feed he it. wants don't feed that it. to remain a church because it's turning into a mosque. He is hurting Are you proud now. that you blew smoke into a woman's face? Are you proud that you blew smoke into I'm a talking. woman's face? I'm talking. Are you proud? So, so who do you want to film, bro? Do you want to film him so, or do you want to film me? Right, well, we're, I'm moving so, this way, so now you have to make a choice. Bob went to internet and found out... Why are you running now? No, no. Why are you running? Why are you running, Bob? So, let's talk about why. So, oh, if you want to film him, when? Yeah. Aga Sophia okay. gonna turn into a mosque. So, why is the church? Bob. Why is the church? But got so hurt. Right. Why is the church irrelevant? That he has to come. Thesis number one. 
and church, talk about is church in most people's eyes because it's so irrelevant because in today's society has reduced christianity in england to a ceremony and because rituals. so many people in england has lost Too their many faith churches because of bob the builder reduced the church to ceremony and ritual and bob you go to a used church to say you go through that the our mass, people you say the liturgy come you say prayers and learn and then you go from away bob the builder and that's all that we do christianity that is and he wants what the church needs to, to be propagate Jesus number two if you go to bob's videos the church he says has accepted i wish to bring the crusade back simply yeah. go on youtube NGO. don't feed go him. on youtube don't feed him. and type don't feed bob the wants crusade He's don't hurting. feed the trolls. He's hurting. Bob wants crusade. He's hurting because if he's you go so, <laughs> the church has yeah, accepted I know, I know, I know, I know. its role. So solely as an if NGO, you go to YouTube, the church thinks type that its own Bob, role the racist, in society. Bob is to be the crusader. A charity Bob to non-Christians and the so Catholic believer. To that one Christian to tell, but he ignores that wide aspects of human life. His religion requires is so damn into. in today's society, in today's church, England, that nobody wants to believe three. in your the church Christianity. Has no political ambitions. People are becoming for Muslim. It's day, every day, every hour. The church has accepted so when Bob that it should simply ride the current at today of the politics current situation of other groups because don't feed the trolls. Yes, yes, he's, he's right. Hurt he's right because he's been exposed. Yeah, yeah, because yes. he's a yes. an Islamic scum. Because who Agatha supports look, ISIS look, 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 look. and who blows smoke yeah. oh into my God. women's faces. Oh, okay, well. and because he punches <laughs> like a girl. Yes, yes, you're right. So right. he says, yeah, Sophia, yeah, yeah, we are you punch a girl, yes, so. and I'm speaking from direct experience. <laughs> so, from direct experience, when Bob looks so at the park, the church and he sees has allowed that so many Muslims are coming here. So many agenda, Muslim brothers are giving dawah by to Islam, the world and people are accepting Islam. What he is important to him. innovate things. So he lies about our scripture. Are telling the church he uses foul language, and he and always try to provoke Muslims in this park. Number five. Number five. And the, the problem with Bob is that he needs to calm down for all of this and blame the unfaith of the people of it Britain because they do not believe in a certain religion anymore. Because he needs to ask the question why is it that, that he is believing in a false substance. religion? Is it and we see that he believes in a religion real substance which with gimmicks promotes shirk, we know Islam is which promotes here in the UK. Oh, he admits. But we know so that now, Christianity if Islam is growing, is growing in Saudi Arabia oh, yeah. and Iran <laughs> yes. and now. Afghanistan, <laughs> now. where Afghan no, yeah, yeah. go go. Why don't you go to Afghanistan? Why don't you go to Afghanistan? Space yeah, yeah. and punches people <laughs> like a girl. So comes <laughs> from. So, <laughs> so <laughs> those are the Bob, five <laughs> thesis <laughs> problems. When Bob looks at so, certain I brothers in the park. Thesis. They give dawa to the Christian so, and they accept and Islam. It hurts him. We're going to step away from the It hurts him. While I talk it about hurts the him. response. Yeah, yeah. Because you can listen when to people trash, look into yeah. Islam, can come and listen logically, to with a reason, they accept Islam. Why are you running, Bob? Why are you running? Bye bye, Bob. Too late. I needed a bit of water. So, me, can you move, please? We're having a quiet conversation here. Take it move, go away, man. Nobody cares. Church is open. Does anybody care about your stupid conversation? Church is open. Nobody cares about your conversation. Shut up. Right. So, what is the answer then? Once, what is the answer? Then? Well, sure. Thesis number one. Okay. It is the idea that these are. This is the response to the problem as I've outlined. 
right? Thesis number one, Christians have to build on a common set of doctrines, values, and history to assert a Christian identity. If we start to assert a Christian identity based on our doctrines and our beliefs and our history, we will be aimed to embed within ourselves social capital upon which to become relevant to people because people will encounter a community of substance. Thesis number two, the church fellowships should reorganize itself to take care of its own community, to take care of its own people first, that is those within the church, those that consider themselves the church. So the, the, then we will bless others out of our abundance when we first learn to take care of our own people as Christians. Thesis number three, the church must have as a political vision for its own people, for the Christians, the idea, the, the, the idea that involves defending the rights of Christians that are emergent from the sense of being a people from thesis number one. So because we have doctrines, values and a history, that means we need certain rights, like the right to observe the Sabbath, or the right to not marry homosexuals, or the right not to carry out abortions. And we have to defend those rights actively, both here in this country and abroad in other countries. And we should be committed, therefore, to the re-Christianization of every institution in society, to make them Christian. And if that means going against the ethos of not being selective based upon faith, then ignore it, because the liberal progressives do exactly that. So when you have two candidates who are in their skills equally matched, but one is a Christian and one isn't a Christian, promote the Christian. Obviously, if they're not skilled enough, don't, okay? Christians should stop trying to find ways to unite the church institutionally. It is never going to happen. What we need to do instead is build our sense of unity upon common causes. Common causes like defending our identity as Christians, our values and what emerges from those values, our doctrines and what emerges from those doctrines. And we should create organizations that emerge from thesis number three, i.e. the idea of defending our doctrines, our rights, our, our, our beliefs. And where those organizations create unity, we should be open to that fact. And we should allow them to happen and not divide upon any other cause. Thesis number five, the churches must emphasize personal responsibility in all the things that I have mentioned. Don't worry about the hecklers. Yeah, stay with me. Christians must emphasize that it is every Christian's responsibility to embody within themselves that Christian identity and to defend that Christian identity. And we should do that with a theology of martyrdom. We need to recover a theology of martyrdom within the church, which is that this is a cause that is worth standing up for, even if it means that you go to prison or even if it means that you die. Unless we recover a theology of martyrdom, you will not have the emotional, mental capacity to see the fight through to the finish. It also has to be rooted in the true theology of sacrifice and of the cross, because this battle will require real sacrifice from every single Christian. And without that theology of sacrifice, coupled with a theology of martyrdom, you will lose. If you're following a theology of prosperity, you will not win. If you're following a theology of a comfy mattress is my God, you will not win. If you're following a theology that is purely, um, purely about this world, 
and about the things that you gain in this world, you will not win. You have to see the next world and the riches that you will gain in the next world as being central to the course. Thank you for your time. Now is your time for questions uh, or, or we had to discuss any other points. Thank you all. So any questions from the audience? Or if you want to discuss any other thesis. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. So, shall I go? I'm, I don't know whether to get a drink or whether to. I've got a drink for you. You got a drink for me? Okay. One water or tea? Uh, uh, water, water, tea. water, please, and then tea later. All right, buddy. Okay. So, you guys all right to listen for another topic? Not boring you? You want to hear another one? Yeah? Okay. Thank you very much. So, I want to talk about the things that fellowships need to have. The church, and again, I'm, I'm going to number them. So, if there's one you want to ask a question on, or there's one you want to discuss, you don't need to remember the point, you just need to remember the number. And then when you remember the number, I'll reread it. Okay? And I want to talk about what every fellowships, what all the fellowships need to have. Now, when I say fellowship, I'm essentially saying the church in its entirety. The church at a local level, the church at a national level, the church at a city level, the church at an international level. And again, a number, a couple of things, 15 things very quickly that churches need to have. Because at the moment, the way that fellowships are structured right across the Anglosphere, particularly, is not relevant to what the church needs to have. You'll see what I mean as I go forward. So the church needs to have, every fellowship needs to have, at the parish level, so just to break down that vocabulary, that's at the local level, that's the church you go to, parish level. And also at the diocesan level, and by diocesan I mean an area, an area, so a group of collections in a geographic area. So every church needs to have at the parish level and at the diocesan level, permanent or semi-permanent evangelists because there are too many fellowships not doing evangelism. And if we don't take evangelism seriously, how do we expect people to become Christian? I'm someone who does evangelism. There's lots of people out there curious. There's lots of people out there hungry. But there aren't enough people speaking to them. And there aren't enough people drawing them in because there aren't enough Christians who take this seriously. Now I recognize that if you're a Christian at Speaker's Corner, this probably doesn't apply to you. But there are too many fellowships that are not doing evangelism at all. They need to have either a permanent or a semi-permanent evangelist. Christians at a parish level or at a diocesan level need to have libraries and study rooms. Because if we Christians are not learning about our doctrines, if we're not learning about our values, and if we're not learning about our history, how can we possibly imbibe them and express them? So studying the faith has to be supported at a parish and diocesan level. That was number two. Number three. The church needs to establish a welfare system at a diocesan and national level, which covers things like mental health, care for the elderly, employment support for the unemployed, which is networked to Christian employers and managers, that has family counselling, that supports ex-offenders, that supports a school system and has hospitals. And the reason for that is because our education system has been taken over by liberal progressives who are pushing an ideology we cannot support. Hospitals are increasingly moving in a direction that will put forced Christians to carry out abortion, euthanasia. Families are breaking down. Ex-offenders, they just need support, full stop. Um, um, and also mental health, because there are peak Christians who become Christians who have mental health problems, and we need to deal with that and not ignore it. I bet you any one of you in your fellowships can identify someone who has a mental health issue. Just remember the numbers, guys. Num number four. Every fellowship at a diocesan and national level 
need to have an active commitment to creating families. There are simply too many single Christians in the Anglosphere. And the reason for that is because the church has abandoned the idea of the creation of families to the Hollywood model, the romantic model that came out of Hollywood. The idea that you see someone across a smoky room and then you fall in love with one another. That does work in some cases, but it is blatantly a massive flop in the Western world. And that is why we have a crisis of demographics. It doesn't work. We need to commit ourselves to the idea of arranged marriages and organize ourselves appropriately at a diocesan and national level. Number six, Christians need to teach apologetics and polemics in every parish and in every diocese because Christians need to know how to defend their faith and they also need to know how to criticize the faith of others. That was number six. Number seven, Christians need in their parish, diocesan and national life, a rhythm of Christian life that addresses the spiritual, economic, political and social concerns of the Christian community, without which too much of our life ends up being taken over by the secular way of doing things. We need to be closer and live life on life with one another in those spheres. Question, thesis number eight. Christians need, at a parish and diocesan level, to do vocational training. The idea of vocation is central to the Christian life. Now, finding your vocation is a guided meditation, and too many churches do not teach this guided meditation, and so many Christians never find their vocation. And it should be particularly targeted at young men and women between the ages of 18 and 24. Number nine, Christians at the parish and diocesan level need real structures of discipleship. The idea of having your spiritual father, your spiritual mother, someone who is teaching you and educating you in the faith. Number 10, Christians need at a diocesan and national level a body that God's orthodoxy, the Church of England particularly as one example, is a church whose bishops have been taken over by heterodox non-Christians who believe that following the culture is akin to following Christianity. And so they go along with cultural ideas of modernity rather than standing upon orthodoxy. Please just remember the number and then you can ask a question at the end. That was for you, number 10. Number 11, Christians need to organize at a diocesan and national level business networks of Christians so that we can move Christians into jobs and so that Christian businesses can support one another. Number 12, Christians at a diocesan, national and international level need structures that can guarantee their security because we have seen at every single level of society and abroad that no one is defending the Christians. Nisa Hussein was told to move out of Bradford by the police. They did not protect him when Muslims were harassing and trying to kill him. No one came to the help of the Christians of Syria and Iraq. They stopped um, ISIS not to defend Christians. No one has helped the Christians of northern Nigeria. No one has helped the Christians of the Central African Republic. Just as a caveat, I support the idea that those structures have to work within the law. Point number 13. There needs to be a body established in every nation state that defends and represents Christians legally because we are seeing increasingly that the secular liberal state is intolerant to Christians and is not willing to guarantee the rights of Christians and we know that in Muslim societies particularly Christians do not have equal rights with Muslims. Point number 14, Christians need to establish in every nation state political parties to represent themselves politically to the rulers. Finally, number 15 is just advice on the last 14. Don't duplicate something that already exists. Support good ideas that already exist. 
Therefore, to use an example, we don't need in this country another body to represent us legally. We just need to support those Christian organisations that do, and there are such organisations. We need to make sure that within any institution or organisation we establish, that we are recruiting Christians to maintain its Christian identity. Furthermore, it is better to do less better than it is to do more badly. And it is always better to recognise what you can do as an individual and what you need to do with others in a group and what you need to do with other groups and other fellowships. And you've got to recognise each problem as being something I can tackle or something that I and others can tackle or something that others and others together can tackle. And you've got to build, break down the problem into those spheres. So, any questions? Yes. I think it was point three, maybe four. Yeah. You mentioned far left. Uh, just left wing indoctrination what, what would be your plans to curb the power of the left wing? So, in terms of, in terms of curbing the power of the left wing, as in so far as it affects the Christian faith, it has to emerge from the fact that we as Christians are willing to stand up for our beliefs and our values and that we stop being frightened of confrontation. Because one thing that I have observed about the liberal progressive is if you stand up to them strongly enough, they will bend. They will back down. They will stand back. They will give you space. So the more we stand in solidarity with one another, and the more we stand up for one another, the more space we will gain for ourselves. We should structure the argument based upon the narrative of being a religious minority. Because the liberal progressive left works from an ideology called intersection from, based upon intersectionalism and it's the ideology of power structures that lead to oppression if we use the narrative of the oppressed minority we speak their language back to them we expose their hypocrisy and by exposing their hypocrisy and the inconsistency of their practice we begin to win the argument culturally and that's the kind of thing we need to be doing. We don't need to be saying to society, you can't marry homosexuals. Let them. What we need to be saying is, we will never tolerate you forcing us yeah. to marry homosexuals. Right. If they want to kill their babies in abortion, it's tragic. We can't stop them. But let us defend every Christian doctor and pharmacist who doesn't want to give out the pill or carry out an abortion. If they want to work on a Sunday and tear up the social fabric by never giving workers a common day off in which to enjoy one another's company and re-establish the networks of human solidarity, let them. But let us defend the right of every Christian never to work on a Sabbath, so that every Christian family and every Christian can stand together. That is the kind of fight that we need, because if you win inch by inch, centimetre by centimetre, ground for your own existence, eventually the, 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 the society that is oppressing you begins to topple. And if you don't believe me, look at how the liberal progressives are destroying what they call the homogeny and the patriarchy. They started by winning rights based upon exceptions and now they are winning the idea that those rights that were once based upon exceptions should now be obligations to all. So that in Canada they recently tried to pass a law saying that you had to describe someone by whatever pronoun they wanted to be described themselves. <laughs> That's how it works. We've seen that it works. There's nothing to stop Christians doing the same. Any other questions on any other points? There are Christians within government, but the problem with Christians in government is that they have accepted the restrictions of liberal modernity. There's loads of Christians, there's loads of Christians within politics, but listen to me bro. Christians who are involved in the Conservative Party are not able to stand up for the things that I'm talking about because they have accepted what modernity teaches that Christianity is restricted just to doing charity work, that that's our sphere of influence that we're allowed. That we can't influence foreign policy from a Christian point of view, or that we can't 
influence health policy from a Christian point of view, or we can't influence the prison policy from a Christian point of view. We Christians need to slowly but surely infest and take over each institution that forms people and forms the law and forms the application of the law. That is how you begin the process of re-Christianization. It happened, it worked against us, it can work for us. Any other questions on any other points? Okay guys, I'm going to take a break. I'll be back and we'll do some more in a bit. Praise the Lord. Content over everything. From your own melody. Man, say it straight. Man, don't listen to BBC. Man, don't listen to ITV. Right, uh, listen, so, um, I'll see you I don't listen to the 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 I